After you've got your data imported with the Class Reporter add-on, you're ready to start creating a report. So click on the link for the instructions and these instructions will guide you through how to create your own Data Studio report just like the one in the example. So the instructions are quite detailed, step by step. Follow the instructions and you shouldn't go wrong and this video will talk you through those steps. So we're going to start off by going to uh, rename our spreadsheet um, because Untitled Spreadsheet is not very helpful for us. So give it a sensible name so that you know exactly how to find it in the next step. So we first need to go to Data Studio. So go to datastudio.google.com and then from there we're going to click on Data Sources and we need to create a new data source. So click on the Create button and choose Data Source. The first data source we're going to use is Google Sheets and all you need to do is click on the name of your sheet, choose the Teachers Worksheet and click on Connect. Once that's in, it's been given an appropriate name, we can head back to Data Studio, make sure you're on the Data Sources tab and create a new data source. We're going to create another Google Sheets connection, choose the spreadsheet again. This time, instead of the Teachers Worksheet, we're going to choose Work, click on Connect, and then that will be connected. Similar to before, it will give it an appropriate name, so go back to Data Studio and create our third data source. This one will also be Google Sheets and we're going to choose our spreadsheet and if you're using students in your report then you can create the students connection here. Head back to Data Studio. So there's our three Google Sheets connections. The fourth connection is going to be to our student connector using this specific connector. So click on the link and that will create a connection to your class reporter data. So we need to authorize this connection. Click on the authorize button. It will ask you for your Google account. So make sure you choose the same super admin account that you used to create your reports. Click on allow. That will give it access to your data in BigQuery. Once you've done that, you can close the tab that's created and we'll be given an option to enter a spreadsheet ID. So what we need to do is go back to the spreadsheet, edit the URL and just copy the ID part of that URL. You'll recognize it by a long string of random characters. Copy that, paste it into the spreadsheet ID field and then click on connect. Once you do that, at this stage, it's a good idea to check that that data has been imported correctly. So click on the explore button. What that does is it gives you a little tool to explore the data that you just connected to. Uh, you'll see hopefully some submission IDs and you can add in additional fields to the dimensions just to check that that data has been connected correctly. Don't worry that it doesn't look very pretty at the moment. We're just checking that it's there and you can just close that tab. Don't worry about saving anything. Head back to Data Studio and you might find that there's actually two data sources being created. They're exactly the same. Feel free to just delete one or you can leave them there. They won't do any harm. Click on the three dots and remove. Uh, but if you do want to rename it, again, click on the three dots and then you can choose rename and then you can type in a suitable name like student submissions or student connector, anything you like that you can recognize. Now, the next step is going to be to make sure our reports load nice and quickly. So we're going to use the extract data connector. This is another connector that's provided by Google. So go back to Data Studio, create a data source, and we're going to choose the extract data connector. Once you're in there, choose the student submissions connection that we just created. And then you need to add in each of the fields into our dimensions. So you can drag them one by one, or you can click add dimension and select each of the fields one by one. There's a lot of clicking 
or dragging. Unfortunately, you can't select all in one go. Once you've done that, the next step is to select our date range. The default is the last 28 days. In my example, I exported data from the beginning of the year. So you can select that specific date. Uh, however, it will only be fixed to today's date. So tomorrow it will still be looking at today and next week it will still be looking at today. Instead, what we could do is change the date option to this year to date, which will go from the 1st of January to the current date. Or even more advanced, you can click on advanced and you can then have a real custom date range so you're able to have a fixed date or a flexible date based on today or a date of your choosing so for example we could look at the end date up to today but the beginning date as a fixed and you can choose any date there so we could go back two years and choose the beginning of the year once you're happy with your dates, I'm actually going to change this one and leave it to this year to date. Just click on apply. And then we need to head over to the right hand side of the screen and enable auto update. And this will allow this data to be refreshed once a day if you choose. And you can set the time. So we might choose, for example, 7 a.m. Click on save and extract. That will make a copy of that data, pull it into Data Studio. That way your reports will load much more quickly. And you can give that data source an appropriate name. For example, extracted student data. Just so that you know which one is the extracted student data and which one's the, the live but sometimes slow data. So that's the five data sources that we need to import. The next step is to open up the template report. So this has been created so that you can really quickly generate a report based on those data sources that you've just created. So click on the use template button and we just need to match the original data sources with your data sources. So where we're looking at the work example, we're going to choose our work connection. Same for teachers and for students. The next one is the student connector where we use the class reporter connector. So we're going to choose that student submissions data source. Also check that the icon match so we can see the uh, connections are the same type. And then the final one is the extracted data. Click on copy report and then this is now your copy of the report using your data sources that are connected to your data. You can check that it's all working by clicking on the view button, which is at the top right. And then you can see the data has been pulled in and you can change the pages to see the work details and the student engagement page. To go back to the edit mode, you need to hover your cursor across the top of the screen and then choose the edit button. Within the editor, you can change all aspects of the report. So for example, you could change the logo, the background color. You can change the theme of the whole report if you like. To change the logo, just click on it and to change the image file, you can choose a, a file from your computer or you could give it a link to an image that you already have online. Any of those changes, they change throughout the report. So for example, we can change the organization name, and put in an appropriate name there. And then when you go to another page, those pages are report based. So they go across the whole report. Once you've made the changes that you need to, you can click on the name of the report to rename it, give it a suitable name that relates to your organization. And then you can get this shared out to other people in the team. So click on share and you have similar sharing options to things like Google Docs and Google Slides. You can share with individuals, 
you can share to the organization with a link. You can even share to a group of users. One key thing to keep in mind is it's, it's advised not to share this with editor access. Always keep it as viewer access, which means that the other members of your team can still analyze that data and still change the filters and sorting and things. They just can't break the report by messing with things. There you have it. Your report's been created, all based on the data from your Google Classroom usage, and you can share that with the relevant members of your team.